Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, the living God. Welcome to Jesus God Incarnate Ministries, where I give you all things Jesus. So if you want some of that, like, subscribe, share, so more people can hear the gospel and stuff. So first off, I want to not, not really apologize. I've been busy working on some things, so um, yeah. But this is going to be typically the new setup until I get an actual stand. So yeah. But uh, welcome back. Thank you. I think we're at almost 400 subscribers, or we, we might be now. Um, I've been kind of keeping track about that. So God is good, you know, it's going to explode eventually, but on to the video. So this is five misquoted Bible verses or, uh, ideas that are misunderstood, uh, amongst Christians and the world, right? So, um, yeah, I'm just going to get straight to it. So <laughs> y'all can see what I'm saying. So, uh, the first one thing, right? Like this is just one of many, you know, uh, they say that the, the first one, the Bible says, do not judge. The Bible actually condones judging, right? It, it, it just, it, it, I'm, I'm just going to read, this is just one part. It's in Matthew chapter seven, verse one, and I won't read all of it just due to time, right? Like go, go check on this stuff. And it says it in multiple places, or, or it gives the idea that judging is okay. You just have to do it the right way, right? So, um, so Matthew 7, verse 1, and I'm going to read to uh, verse 5. It says, do not judge that you, uh, that you be not judged. For with the judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with the measure you measure, it shall be measured to you. And why do you look at the splinter within, uh, which is in your brother's eye, but the beam in your own eye you do not consider? Or how can one say to your brother, let me remove the splinter from your eye and, and behold, the beam is in your eye. Hypocrite. First, remove the beam out from your eye and then you will see clearly to remove the splinter from your brother's eye. So Jesus actually tells us to judge, right? He, he, he just doesn't want us to judge wrongly because he, he was saying before you judge, right? I'm just going to put it in modern terms. Before you judge, Right, somebody else's righteousness, holiness, sin, life, uh, like whatever situation. Make sure you're straight first. Make sure that you are washed of your sins. Make sure that you have got can see clearly before you can go uh, judge someone else's uh, situation. Right. So it's literally saying the opposite. The Bible does say judge. Right. It just says judge correctly. Right. And and there's a lot more verses right that they can go into. You can. Um, like look into Peter, Paul, and, and even in the Old Testament, right? It talks about judging correctly. It it, it doesn't condone not, it, it, it actually encourages us, us to judge, right? So, so like we're, like Paul talks about how we're going to judge the angels and we're going to judge the world, right? And, and he talks about how, like, he's like, why are you guys, uh, it might be Peter, Paul, he, he talks about how like the Christians are sending their claims to court, right? When it's like, well, you guys have better judgment than the world. So why are you letting somebody else judge this situation when you have Christ and the knowledge and the, and the spirit of God that, that opens and gives you all understanding, right? So, so Peter and Paul actually tell us to judge, right? They just say judge correctly. Jesus says that. He says judge correctly, right? So that's, that's one of those things. Like a lot of people say only God can judge me. Yes, there's a difference between God, the final judgment and saying this person's going to hell or heaven, right? But then there's the judgment that we can make. I can confidently say that if somebody does not believe, I don't care who they are, if they did not believe up to the point of death and they denied Christ up to the point of death and were not baptized in the Holy Spirit, I don't care if they lived a Christian life, if they were gay, if they were a murderer, if they were uh, Hitler, if they were whatever, if they were the best person ever, the old innocent lady down the street that would never hurt a fly. If they did not believe up until their death and they were not baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that they're condemned to hell, right? But let's say it's the opposite. Let's say that they were a homosexual. They were a killer. They were Hitler. They were Stalin. They were the worst person that you could ever think of, right? And if they repented, and got baptized in the Holy Spirit and washed in the blood of Jesus, even a millisecond before they died, they're in heaven. I can confidently say that, 
now. I do not know which one it was. We can ask God, right? When my younger sister passed, we asked God and we confirmed that she is in fact in heaven. That's something that we as believers have the ability to do if, you have, if you're in that faith level, right? But whether they go to heaven or hell, that's not up to me. All I can say is God says you go to heaven if you have the Holy Spirit. And then God says you don't go to heaven if you don't have the Holy Spirit. So that's that's where that's where the judgment ends, right? But like a lot of people, they want to go to hell. I'm like, all right, you, you can go there. I don't care. You know, like I'm good. So uh, moving on to number two, right? So um, th th this this one's commonly given to people like myself, entrepreneurs or or people that uh, teach about money or something like that in the church, right? And th th this is misquoted as well. So it says, the love of money is the root of all evil, right? Um, and it's in First Timothy uh one chapter one i believe it's first timothy first timothy i think it's six first timothy six when i can find it Trying to find the exact verse because it's one through ten is the actual um, is the actual thing, right? Um, I guess I'll just read verse ten, but but go back. It's it's First Timothy chapter six, verse one through ten gives you a little bit of the context, right? That people were um, they're basic like this. This is my like reiteration of it, right? They're basically using the money that they had as a as a gauge of their faith right so then then, then they turned from the faith and, and turned into money and the, and the things of the world but chapter uh, verse 10 right says for the love of money is the root to all kinds of evil because of which some aspiring after money have been led away from the faith and pierced themselves through many pain with many pains right so it's talking about how the love of it led them astray right? It wasn't money itself. You got to catch that. Listen, right? It wasn't the money itself. It was the love of money, right? So you can have money, right? And not love it, right? To, 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 to the, well, I mean, it, in order to have something, right, you, uh, for it to grow and you have to take care of it. So you have to love it to some degree, right? Like you have to love your shoes enough to, to, to take care of them somewhat, right? You have to love your body enough to feed it, right? Now, now some people, they don't, they don't uh, treat their body in the way that it should be treated, right? Like eating healthier foods, exercising semi-regularly and whatnot. But that doesn't mean that they're, that they hate their body, right? They love their body, right? I think it was Paul or Peter says like, which one of you hates their body? Like you like feeding your body because it feels good to eat food. You love your body, right? So, so, it, but, but it goes to, to when you overindulge in eating and drinking and, and, and like just sleeping and uh, and not taking care of it, that's when it becomes a problem, right? So so it's not the, it's not the money itself because money is just like this thing. It's gonna sit here and do nothing until somebody does something with it, right? And, and then he was talking about how they pierce themselves with many pains because they were chasing after money rather than chasing after God. That's the difference, right? Like people that they, they read the King James translation and and it says is the root. Uh, is the root of all evil. They spoke different back then. So in their minds, they knew it was the root to all kinds of evil, right? That's the difference. What do people do for money? A lot of evil stuff, right? But that's, that's the thing. These Christians, they turned their eyes from God and the faith and then turned it into chasing money. Do you see the difference, right? Like you could have a lot of it. Like the father of our faith, you got to catch this. Listen closely. The father of our faith was very rich. Like the first Christian, technically, right? The first believer, right? That, that, that the promises would be established through Abraham was very rich. And it was accounted good. And God called gold good, and gold is the way of 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 what of what you know um, of how of how wealth is measured back then and even now, right? Is this turned into a different form of gold? 
right? Paper and stuff like that. But it, it, God called money good. God called gold good, right? And gold is, is, is the, the, the center of, of, like, you know, where money stems from, right? So, so going to number three. Um, this one's, it's, it's interesting because a lot of people, they, they're ignorant. Um, they deny the truth or they're lying or like, or the, the, the second two, right? So like the third, the third misconception is this is an idea that the Bible has been changed, right? The, the only thing with that is that you have to provide evidence that it's been changed, right? Because a lot of people, they don't know, we actually have millions of pages of, of manuscripts of the Old and New Testament. Like we're talking millions of pages, right? Like uh, 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 the Bible that we possess in our hands today has more historical evidence to verify its historicity so basically, right, if I put it in layman's terms, the Bible has more proof that it's reliable than any book in existence. Like that, the, <laughs> yeah, I got it. Hold on, I'm going to say it again. The Bible has more proof based on the archaeological evidence of the pages that we found and all going through, through the, all the stuff. The Bible is, has more proof than any other book in existence of its validity. If, if, if you go research and if you deny the fact you are lying to yourself and you're being intellectually dishonest, I'm just going to keep it a book. I do not want to sugarcoat anything. If you go and do your research and you find out that the Bible actually, there is... Okay, if there is proof that the Bible has been changed, you have to go through the mountain ranges of proof that the Bible is the most, I gotta say that again, the most reliable book in existence. I don't care what other book you got. This is the most reliable book in existence based on the proof that we have right now. The millions of pages. We have almost 25,000 uh, manuscripts, which is the, the either pieces, whole, whole books, right? Like 90 something intact, 90 something percent intact, right? Like we, we got, we got, uh, we, we got uh, like history, history books and, and, and kingdoms and stuff like that, talking about the people in the Bible, verifying them. Like, like this, this is not, it's, it's not it, like anybody that denies this is being intellectually dishonest and they're a liar. All you gotta do is go do your research. And if you don't wanna do your research, you're willfully being ignorant and you're scared because you, as soon as you know that the Bible is actually true, you have to change your ways. Because the Bible claims that this man came from heaven and that dude claimed to be God and he said he was gonna die and rise again. And then he actually did. So if he rose again, whatever he said was true. Now, what did he say was true? Go in the Bible and read it up. You have to change your ways. You have to come to the cross. You have to give up your life of sin and go into the life of righteousness with God. And that scares people because the Bible says that they suppress the truth in unrighteousness, but they were not lovers of the truth, but they were lovers of selves. And that's the dilemma. That we have more proof for this book being true, like I gotta say this again, than any other book in existence. Like y'all gotta catch what I'm saying. In existence. And then people wanna say the Bible has been changed because you're you're either ignorant, which is fine, right? Just get unignorant. Or you're or you you know about it and then and, and then you're you're still saying it so you're a liar or you're evil or you're just the, the the last two you're either you're either a liar and you're evil right or you're just ignorant e either way right like this still remains true you just got to go research it don't be willing to hold on to your pride just because of whatever cuz this it is true right regardless if you believe it or not regardless if i believe it or not okay number 4 
So um, this, this is a misunderstood idea, right? Because th this kind of adds on to number three. But people, they don't know the difference between a version and a translation, right? So, so there's like too many English translations. I'm going to say it like that. There's too many. There's like 30 something, what, 40, 50, whatever, how many English translations, right? So a translation is different than a version. A version, right? People say, oh, there's so many versions of the Bible. Well, which verse? There's only one version of the Bible, the one that was written, and that's it, right? Now, the translations, right? Now, if I wrote it, if I wrote, uh, like, if I translated a book, right? Let, let's say, for example, I translated um, the Harry Potter series into into old, into, like, Shakespearean language, right? In, into the language, into the English language that they spoke, like, 400 years ago. It would look radically different. I mean, it would still pose the same ideas, well, it wouldn't look radically different. It would still have the same ideas. They would just switch like you for thou and thy and stuff like that and thine and, and you know, hast and, and, and you know, uh, shalt and, and, and stuff like that, right? So, but it's still the same Harry Potter. That's what I mean, right? Now, if you, now, if keeping the same Harry Potter analogy, right? Now, a different version of the Harry Potter analogy would be like, like Hermione is the chosen one rather than Harry, Right, the Lord Voldemort is going, is going after uh, after Dumbledore, and Dumbledore has the scar rather than Harry. That's a completely different version, right? Sirius uh, Sirius Black is actually uh, uh, not not uh, not his his god godfather, but n not Harry's godfather. But he's actually Ron's dad or something, right? So th that's a completely different version. You see what I'm saying? Hogwarts isn't in Hogwarts anymore. It's in like New York City. Right. Like that is that's a completely different version. But a translation. Right. It'd be like if I if you wrote uh, Harry Potter in the modern day language, which it's written in. And then you and then and then you went into another uh, and then you went to another English version, like like the Shakespearean English version. Right. Like that's a different translation. So now going into it. So. A version. There's only one version of the Bible. Just one. There's many translations. So, th like, if you don't know what they take, what they do with translations, right? They go to the original languages. They go to the original languages, and then they translate it from the original languages into whatever. So, from Hebrew onto Arabic, Aramaic onto Arabic, Greek onto Arabic. Then they take the same original languages. They go to the they go to the manuscripts. They don't go from, from like back in the day they had to go from like uh, Greek to to Latin to German to English, right? But now we skip all that. We just go straight to the Hebrew, straight to the uh, uh, Aramaic, straight to the Greek. Then and then you take that and then you put it in Spanish. Then you take that and then you put it in Amharic. Then you take that and you put it in German. Then you take that and you put it in whatever language, Cantonese, Mandarin, uh, Laos, all that stuff. It goes directly from the Hebrew language. That's what people think a version is. Like y'all ain't thinking about what you're saying. I'm guilty of this too. So I'm, I'm, I'm not pointing fingers, right? Like I'm also guilty of it. But as soon as I wised up, that's how I knew the difference. There's one version of the Bible. There's different translations because God wants people that speak uh, 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 Dutch to also be able to read the language. So would you call Dutch, Spanish, Arabic, Amharic, uh, all the, would you call those versions of, of the Bible? No, those are translations. Now, if you had uh, Spanish translated in in, in different dialects in Spanish, that's still the same Spanish translation. It's just in different dialects, right? It's still, there's one version of the Bible, the Hebrew, the Aramaic, and then the Greek. That's it. Like, that's where people miss, they, they misunderstand it. They don't know what a version, the difference between a version and a translation is, right? So, number five, and, and the, these are kind of like, the, they're, some of them don't have correlation, but uh, some of them do, and I'm going to go through more of them. But number five is everyone is a child of God, right? And, and and this comes from the world. It comes from the devil straight up, right? So when you're looking at what a child of God is, 
It's someone, Jesus says, that is led by the Holy Spirit. You gotta pause. How can you be led by the Holy Spirit if you don't have the Holy Spirit to be led by? Well, how do you get the Holy Spirit? Well, you gotta repent, believe, confess with your mouth, get baptized in Jesus' name, and then, and then you also get sealed in the Holy Spirit. Those are children of God. Not ever. Now, you, you got to not misunderstand. Everyone is a creation of God, but not everyone is a child of God. That's the difference. I'm going to say it again. Everyone is a creation of God, but not everyone is a child of God. So that's, that's what it is because Jesus talks about how uh, the Pharisees were of their father, the devil, right? So Satan has children. So if Satan has children, how can everyone be a child of God? These are actual questions you have to kind of ask yourself because a lot of people fall into the trap of saying everyone's a child of God, everyone's going to heaven or something. Like, whoa, hold on. God didn't say that. Where'd you get that from? Who taught you that? <laughs> As Do Ray Love would say, who taught you that? <laughs> right? But um, but yeah, so you, you got to really think like to be a child of God, you have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You can't be baptized in the Holy Spirit lest you believe in Jesus, right? You can't believe in Jesus lest the Father draws you. And when the Father draws you, you repent, you believe, you confess, you get baptized in Jesus' name, and then, and, then, and then you get sealed in the Holy Spirit, right? So, so these are some of the, the, the misconceptions, right? Five misconceptions that Christians typically have because, it, and, and the world too. It's sad that Christians have this. I mean, I, I can understand why, right? But if these videos bless you, uh, like, subscribe, share, and thank you for all the subscribers that have been here this long and whatnot. So, um, yeah, we will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you so much.